think I'm out. The star linebacker coming off the edge right here. That does not look pretty. Uh, it's definitely weird. Uh, you know, came a long way from this. You know, it just shows growth. Uh, I definitely had no clue what I was doing. I was just running around like a crazy man out there, just trying to have fun. Because, you know, scout team's not always fun when you're not playing, when you're sitting on the sidelines. So it's kind of like we'd make this kind of like our game day. And we just try to have fun with it. And then, you know, you're going up against guys like Jack Allen, Jack Conklin, you know, all Americans, uh, future NFL players. So it gives you opportunity to work on your game against some of the best players in college football. We actually had a good scout defense this year. Uh, you see Raekwon's out there. I think Tyreek was out there. Uh, David Dowell. Uh, there's a lot of us out there. I guess they had me playing outside linebacker. That was a good quarterback pressure. Got to pull off. Connor Cook obviously is in a red jersey. I probably would have been dumb enough to try to hit him back then. I guess I was pressuring quarterbacks early. Had to move me to D end. I just know I didn't have a lot of control of my body back then. I was just kind of running around. Here I am going against Jack Conklin. They used to get sick of me. They used to be trying to chill. It didn't matter what day of the week was, I'd be trying to go hard. So they, they used to get mad at me. Coach Staten, Coach Bowles couldn't stand me back in the day. Running a little blitz here. It didn't really work. You know, linebacker wasn't really my spot. My feet got too twisted up, out of control. Here's another little edge blitz. And maybe I should just start at defensive end from all along. It's kind of nice off the edge. Maybe they knew it was coming, but I play every position on scout team. D end, linebacker, D tackle, fullback, tight end. I was nice as that tight end. They used to snag balls, I'm telling you. A little drop in here, that is ugly. That is probably why they moved me from linebacker. But you know, you see a lot of growth and size, control of my body, athleticism, uh, just the way I play the game, but Still, at the end of the day, I was still the same idiot running around out there, flying around, trying to hit people. I think that I probably picked up a golf club when I was about four. Um, I grew up the first like seven years of my life in a really small town. So um, we would have to go to the town over to find a golf course. So it was just kind of something fun that my dad would always take us out to do with my two other sisters. I just kind of liked being out in the open and um, kind of just learned to love the game and being with my family. But um, I think it was about six that I had joked around and told my dad someday I was going to hit it farther than him and he didn't believe me so it was kind of a fun challenge that I had. She was, she was just with her sisters having fun, honestly. My husband had the idea to give, give them all a different colored golf ball, so there were just golf balls flying everywhere. I thought the kids would never learn how to putt because by the time we got to the putting green, we had to pick up our golf balls because people were waiting on us because it was, there was a lot going on. So and they were learning and they were just having fun and it was just family time. I was homeschooled my whole life, so I was used to being able to do school, go outside, take breaks. and. So I think that golf is such a cool sport for me to be able to be outside all day during the daytime and then come home and do school later on. But I think at an early age, I realized that I just had a love for the competitiveness of that golf kind of brought to uh, my life. So I think that that early on was something that drew me to the game as well as it was something that my dad could teach me. We didn't compete as a family, we were just having fun. But once that, um, she got bit by that bug, I would just say, that she just, it motivated her in a, in a different way than we, we thought would ever happen, I guess, that made her a better golfer. The fact that she loved competing, it didn't make her nervous, it didn't um, exhaust her of hours out there. It, um, it gave her more energy and more desire to, when's the next tournament, when, where can we go next? One of the defining moments, I would say, for my career, as far as my confidence with the game, probably had to do more with um, my first like real big event I played in and I didn't make the cut and there were the, all the best juniors in the world and I remember saying to my dad that I think I'm gonna have to choose whether or not I'm just gonna play Michigan tournaments for the rest of my life or if I want to actually go to the next level and 
work hard and be able to play with the best in the world. I came back the next year and I, and I won the whole tournament, so I think that that was kind of like the boost that I needed um, for my game to say, when you set your mind to something, you can do anything that you want. High snap oh. over his head. They're running after it. Who's going to get there first? It is going to be the Spartans That's at the 20 yard line. Kenny Willickus, who else? Growing up, I didn't watch a lot of TV, so I didn't watch a lot of football growing up. So, kind of my football game was just what I thought it was, what I thought it was supposed to be. You know, he came here as a non recruited walk on. You know, didn't have scholarship offers or maybe some small ones. And, you know, played linebacker, played some fullback, uh, played some defensive end and as a scout teamer, played all over the place. And then, you know, two years later, he finally gets to play in 2017 and he starts making his move. I feel like the coaches really took the time to help me mature, help me grow as a man. All right, don't be sloppy with it. Good, don't be sloppy with it. I think you gotta have some success along the way to continue to, to take the steps up the ladder. And I think he had those success points which uh, indicated to him that, hey, I can play at this level. Just on scout team, he obviously got reinforcement from his coaches. I feel like no matter the circumstance, uh, no matter the circumstances you're put in, if you attack it with relentless effort and you know give your all, truly care about what you're doing and have a passion about what you're doing, uh, you're going to accomplish great things and be able to uh, impact others on what you're doing. Bro, look at us. We're flying around, bringing the juice. The whole defense is going. Let's go. Come on, man. It's a new year. Let's get it. Big flag. You know, off the field, I try to be a foxhole guy. Coach D talks about a foxhole guy. You know, someone that's uh, you can count on. Someone that when you're going out to battle, someone you want lined up next to you and just uh, someone that's going to give his all for the brother next to him and uh, for the people around him. He's enthusiastic. He promotes toughness. He promotes effort. He promotes knowing what to do, which are the three components that we constantly are asking our players and talking about. And he promotes that. And um, he's like a coach on the field. And you know when he's dinged up and he's banged up a little bit, you know he's coaching. Uh, so he's always trying to get better, and he doesn't settle. I think that's when I say he doesn't settle, he doesn't settle for being as good as he is right now. He always wants to aspire to be better or to do well in, uh, in another area. So uh, he's been impressive, relentless. Dan back to Smith, Dan back near the goal line. The ball's up. On. The ball is loose, it's recovered. Kenny by Willikas. The Spartans. Kenny Willikas makes another play. Raquan Williams knocked it out of there. And then Willikas, these are two guys that will be playing on Sundays next year, making big time plays. Sometimes in the field, you just react. Uh, you're just playing on the flow of the game. Some of it's just, just naturally making plays out there. So sometimes you look back and, what was I thinking? How did I do that? But you know, you just try to learn from each and everything. And if I do one thing out on the field, if I can add that to my game, you know, make it more consistent, you know, that helps me become a better player. He's a relentless player. I mean, he's completely at, at ease with himself and his energy, and uh, he brings that and rubs off on other people, and he, he really works hard to master his craft off the field and on the field, and then in the weight room as well. One more time, make the time, and you get a little break. Let's go. I feel like preparation is the most important thing. Uh, when you prepare each and every day, you can play confidently on Saturdays. Throughout the week, it's a lot of mental preparation, a lot more than it used to be. I mean, growing up in high school, when I first got here, I didn't know that much about the mental part and watching film as much. I did a little bit, but you know, I've continued to try to grow and watching film more and more each and every week. I studied a lot of film on guys, you know, like Shalit Calhoun, Marcus Rush, uh, Demarcus Ware, Von Miller, Khalil Mack. You know, I just study as much film on the greats as I can and try to pick a little bit from each part of their game. You know, obviously, some of those guys are extremely talented. I'm not going to be able to do everything that a Von Miller does or a Khalil Mack does, but if I can, you know, watch his film and pick up one or two things from his game, that can make me that much better of a player. Wasink in trouble, and he'll be sacked at the 35. Guess Well, my mom went to Michigan State, so I think that um, growing up, I kind of was always around the area and kind of had an early love for this area and just the campus and everything. And so I grew up always wearing Michigan State stuff no matter where I went. 
I think I remember hearing about her when she was in like sixth or seventh grade. But then, you know, obviously we're watching the scores of all the, the GAM junior events and the things in our state. And, you know, her name kept popping up, her name kept popping up. And then the scores that she was shooting for her age at you know, that level were really, really good. And uh, so then it was in eighth grade that we really decided to have a meeting and set up a meeting with her and really talk about Michigan State. It was such an honor that not only that she saw how much I wanted to play for her, but also that she believed in me um, as much as I believed in her and wanted me to play with her just as bad. I was just so excited and I couldn't wait to come to school, but I had, I had four years left. So I had a whole high school career to go into and to grow. And so that was definitely something that was always in the back of my mind as far as there were still things that I wanted to accomplish in high school, but yet I'd already made this huge commitment to Michigan State. Coming into my senior year, um, I was doing LCC classes and I was done with high school and I told coach, I'm like, whenever you're ready for me, I'm, I'm ready to come. Like I'm done school, I'm ready to go. I think everything Allie's done has been kind of early. You know, she was a superstar at a young age. She wanted to come and I don't really think at that point there was any stopping her and I didn't really feel like I needed to. You know, I knew she, we would put her right in the lineup. I knew she would make an impact. And it really, it was, it was just how would the team, you know, react to that. We didn't really, I had never done that before. I'd never been on a team before, so it was a lot of adjusting, but I think that we all kind of got it together and um, said, you know, it's time to do something awesome this spring. And so I think we just went right in and realized what we had to do. And winning the Big Ten Championship was, it was something that I will never forget. I just love playing golf. And I always say that I don't play it for the awards and for everything, but if you play good golf, you know, those kind of things are out of your control. And so being the Big Ten Freshman of the Year was another thing that I, I didn't even know existed, honestly. So I think just having that after one season was just another great blessing that kind of allowed me to prove to myself and to show the coaches that, you know, I was ready to be here and I'm ready to start on this three and a half years of, of my career at MSU. You know, when you're having a season like that, uh, you kind of feel like you're invincible, you're on top of the world. Kenny Willekes has it for a loss. Kenny Willekes show. Herbert well protected, gets through his progression, and another drop, this one from Jacob Breland. An injured player for Michigan State. I believe it's Kenny Willekes. Injury like that happens, you never think it's like something like that's gonna happen, especially, I never, never thought it was gonna happen to me. Uh, it's kind of humbling and uh, gives me a different perspective on life. I believe everything happens for a reason. Uh, I'm glad it happened. It taught me a lot of things about, you know, patience and uh, timing and just trusting God's will. But, you know, it was a hard road back, a lot of hard work this off season. But I was able to continue to stay, stick with it, be a leader to my teammates. I tried to be in spring ball, still try to bring energy. And uh, I'm able to come back and be a better player for it. Smart dogs! Me personally, try to lead by example and then uh, be a vocal leader, do the things right first and then you can tell others to do things after you've done them yourself right. But uh, it was kind of harder for me not being able to be out there and still trying to, you know, tell guys you got to go hard, you got to bring energy, you got to do this, you got to do that when I'm just standing there. So, you know, it helped me grow as a leader and learn how to coach and be a mentor to guys when I'm not actually out there with them. Let's go, let's go, let's get it. Come up field, you know he's going to pull it. There you go, Parks. Get back out. Get back out. Good to be back. Got the 4A back on, so feel good again back in the lab. Got the weight up to about 260. Scary sight. I don't personally care about individual success. I mean, if we have team success, individual success comes. But, you know, uh, I've had, had a little bit of individual success last year, and we ended up 7-6. and six. On the left, he looked too long. He is spilled for a sack. Kenny Willekes. I just want to win. I'm just going to go out, put it out, all out on the field each and every game, and uh, hopefully it results in us going back to Indy. Back on 17, Allison Gear trying to get it going back in the right direction. Gear has 122 from the second cut. 
she's staring it down. And that's going to roll out. What a shot at this point in the team competition. Just sticks it on 17. Those are just moments, again, that you just look back on and, and really soak it in. And they were so special just to share with the team as well and to know that we were doing it back to back. It was both of them were equally incredible, but I think the second one even had some more special meaning to all of us because it was we had seniors and we wanted to make the most out of that year. The best players that we've ever play, had at Michigan State, to me, they all have a lot of things in common, but one thing is they have a switch that flips when they go out into the golf course. And you know, no matter what's going on in the rest of their world, when they get onto the golf course, they're ready to play and they know why they're there. You know, we're, we're, they're there to win, they've trained to win. Going into my junior year that summer, I played in the USAM for the first time, which was an incredible experience. And then last April, I had the opportunity to play in the inaugural Augusta National Women's Amateur event. Just being able to be asked to that was honestly just the most incredible thing. So let alone actually getting to go to Augusta National and to walk on the grounds. It was, it was honestly a week that I will never forget. I don't think that there's many moments in life where you're aware of when the best thing that's ever happened to you is happening to you. And I think that when I walked onto the driving range with Coach and I saw the tears in her eyes and just realizing kind of what that moment was meaning for golf and for women and just being able to be a part of that, I, I was fully aware on the first tee box that it was really one of the most special things that I was going to have with me for forever. It was just a historical event for women's golf for Augusta finally to open its doors. You know, they only chose 72 players in the world. And to have a player from Michigan State University that was part of that first year is something that was just a tremendous experience and something that all of all Spartans should be very proud of that, you know, we had a player there. I've watched her play in three LPGA tournaments, in Symmetra tournaments, so her list of accomplishments and what she's had opportunities to do as a Spartan have truly been amazing. And, you know, to me, this is her senior year and there's only more to come. Knowing that she doesn't just make rash decisions, she um, really thinks through things, prays through things, and decides maturely um, and wisely when she does make big decisions like marriage and coming to school early and committing at 14, just 15 years old. It's just about making the most of every area that you are in your life. I think that we go through so many phases in life and we're in so many different situations when we're just kind of becoming who we're meant to be and just as we're growing up and the thing I've always just done is try to always just stay true to who I am and allow myself to change and allow myself to evolve in however long that takes me or however short of time that that takes me. I don't know, I never really sat back and said, you know, I'm going to do things ahead of time. I'm going to make think people think that I'm crazy because, you know, I'm getting married at 19 or I left the day after I got married, never had a honeymoon and went to the USAM, like left my husband the next morning. and. So I think the unconventional part of my life is just another part of what makes me uniquely who I am. Good afternoon, everybody, and happy homecoming from Spartan Stadium in East Lansing as we get set for the Spartans and the Indiana Hoosiers, the 104th homecoming celebration here at Michigan State University. First and goal. Collins. Strikes first. Vinix going for the end zone, and he's got his man, Wap Fillier. And the Hoosiers are on the board. So the Spartan offense will have to go to work against the Indiana defense now. The score is tied. Brian Lewerke throws right sideline, and it is caught by Daryl Stewart. Nice fingertip grab inside the 20. Snap back to Bryant. Guns it, middle of the end zone. Easy throw and catch. Daryl Stewart with the grab. Touchdown, MSU. Lewerke, he's not thinking field goal, he's thinking 
touchdown, Daryl Stewart, his second of the game. Oh, high snap, Penix takes it, goes across the field, and it is caught. Donovan Hale with one hand. What a grab, and Indiana leads it early in the fourth quarter. We've got a ball game now, Jason. Indiana takes the lead early here in the fourth, 24-21. Yes, we do, and they don't have an answer right now for Michael Penix. He has just been lights out. Penix scrambling, and down he goes. Big Raekwon Williams laying the lumber, and the Hoosiers will punt it. Brian takes the snap. Fires goal line, catch made, Matt Seibert, touchdown MSU. So we'll see if that Indiana offense can get back to its earlier rhythm. Will Indiana go back to the quick passing game? Steps up, throws for the right pylon to Fillier, and he has made the grab. Oh, wow. His 14th catch wow. of the game. And that's from 11 yards out. Tied up late in this football game, and you have an opportunity with your senior quarterback. And two minutes left, two timeouts. Can you get in field goal range? And give Coughlin a chance. Who winds up and throws to the middle of the field. And Daryl Stewart, despite being interfered with, comes down with a ball. Matt Coughlin can put this one away. A 21-yarder from straight on for Matt Coughlin to try to win it for the Spartans. And he got it right down the middle. And the old brass platoon once again belongs in the hands of Michigan State.